Good morning, Doug here. New day, new morning, new-ish shirt, though I can't remember what shirt I was wearing yesterday. Yesterday was the day when I went, uh, I spent the day with Matthew, went to his house to pick up my bicycle and my trailer and uh, transported it here to my hotel. And uh, interestingly enough, the bike is already gone because another friend of mine, KY, he offered to store it uh, at, his at his house for me. And he came and picked it up already. So I have my trailer in my room still because I wanted to sort through my old camping gear. But I only had the bike back in my life for a couple of hours. But I think I'll be reunited with it soon. Yeah. More about that uh, later on as the days unfold here in KL. So yeah, what is it? It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 after 10 actually. I'm running a little bit late. I'm meeting a friend for brunch down at Mid Valley Mega Mall. So that is where I'm going. And as always, my journey and my days beginning here at Masjid Jamak. And I'm normally moving very slowly, but somehow I got uh, distracted when I was getting ready and uh, running a little bit late. I should still arrive on time, but I don't have time to uh, dilly dally the power of touch and go. We touch and we go. Just for the sake of variety, I was going to take a different route to Mid Valley Mega Mall back in the old days before the bridge from the uh, LRT line was built. I would take the KTM train. That was pretty much the only option. K and I took a bus a couple of times, but I normally took the KTM train. I was gonna do that this morning, just to do something different. But yeah, because I lost track of time, I don't have the time to do it. Those trains come at a frequency of maybe every 30 minutes, if you're lucky, then there can be an hour between trains. So they're more like real trains. You have to check the schedule. Like LRT, MRT, you can just show up and another train will be showing up every five minutes. So you don't have to time everything. But if you're taking the KTM, to Mid Valley, I would have to say get there for the 940 train. And if I miss it, the next train might not be until 1010 or 1015 or something like that. So I didn't really want to risk that. So here I am. And uh, this is an easy shot. I get on the Kalana Jai line, whoosh, straight to uh, Abdullah Hukum station. And I'm right there at uh, Mid Valley. So this is the the uh, safe and secure way of getting there. There we are. I hear a train arriving. Masjid Jemek, Pasarseni, KL Central, Bangsar, Abdullah, Hukum. And I got confused the other day because they were announcing it and I didn't recognize the name anymore. Oh, <laughs> the train just went right by. It was a test train, an empty one. But now this, the Bangsar station has been sponsored by Bank Rakyat. So they were saying something like Bank Rakyat Bangsar station. And I got all confused because I didn't recognize the name anymore. But you see that a lot now. KL Central is no longer KL Central. It's now Red One KL Central. As the corporations are busy sponsoring the uh, various LRT and MRT stations. I just happened to be at the end of the train so I can shoot a little bit of video of the rear window. Got the KL Tower over there, Merdeka 118. Shooting almost directly into the sun though, so I don't know how it looks. There's the, uh, the old uh, KL train station. nothing better than an LRT elevated train. You get to stay above ground, see the city. And it stays above ground all the way to where I'm going. I think we're just arriving at uh, KL 
KL Central, and I heard them call it KL Central Red One, the new name. I keep forgetting what Red One is, a corporation of some kind, but I can't remember what it is, a bank or insurance company, a technology company, I'm not sure. Central Red One. That's the one I was just talking about. I didn't. I didn't recognize the name the other day. Bank Rakyat Bangsar. It's like, where the heck are we going? Then when I saw the sign, I figured it out. Been sponsored by a bank. Got a creature in here hitching hitching a ride on the LRT. Yeah. There's a bank rock yacht right there. The bank rock yacht building. And that's the cluster of skyscrapers around. KL Central in uh, Little India in Brickfields. Another tower going up over there, of course. You see them everywhere you look in uh, KL. The next stop is mine at uh, Mid Valley Mega Mall. Yeah, I'm here in plenty of time, so it's okay. There is the station name, Abdullah Hukum, Kalanajaya 17. And I remember reading about him before because I was curious where the name came from. And I have a vague idea of who he is, but I don't have all the facts straight in my head. So I'm going to do a bit of research later on, I hope, and uh, talk about him a little bit. train arriving from the other direction. I just wanted to walk down here, get a look in this direction from the uh, station platform. Uh, another uh, tremendous building going on, up building up there. Still has the outer crane uh, tower attached to the building, so it's still under construction. Yeah, I'm not, I can't remember offhand what that building is. And I think on Thursday, I'm coming out here. You can see there's a white building right there. University Malaya, maybe. I think I'm going to uh, meet up with a, uh, a new friend and Planet Doug supporter. And uh, we're going to go get a coffee on the university grounds and then go for a tour of the university. That's happening on Thursday, I think. And I think it's University Malaya. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that tall building is there with the helicopter landing pad and this big white thing over there. I don't know what either of them are. I just uh, checked online, and I haven't been able to locate this tall building, so I don't know what that is yet. But this, not surprisingly, is a mosque. 
I believe it's the, the Bangsar Mosque, or TNB or PNB Bangsar Mosque. It does look a little bit mosque-like from here. So yeah, that's the large mosque. But I haven't figured out what that tall building is yet. But anyway, I better go. I have to make my way through two different shopping malls to get to Mid Valley. This bridge takes me across to sort of Eco Forest Park or something like that, Eco Mall, Eco Shopping Center. And then there's another bridge that goes across to the Gardens Mall. And then from the Gardens Mall, you finally get to uh, Mid Valley. So yeah, it's a little bit of a stroll for, to get from here to there. The power of the touch and go. Touch, and off we go. And there's the official name of this place, by the way, KL Eco City. But it, it looks like it's sponsored by a company as well. It is now the Setia KL Eco City. Right over there. When you come out of the LRT, that's the first place you go. And then you end up on this uh, bridge, which takes you to the Gardens Mall. The fancy mall if you need your Louis Vuitton bag updated. Get the latest Louis Vuitton. This is where you come, the Gardens Mall. So I'm inside a food court of uh, Mid Valley Mega Mall. It's sort of in between Mi Mid Valley Mega Mall maybe and uh, the Gardens Mall, sort of splits between them maybe, I'm not sure. And I've met up with my friend here and uh, my friend won't be showing up on video but I will show the meal that I'm going to be having. It's quite interesting. I'll show you the menu in a minute. I just wanted to give a quick look at this place where we're eating. I just, I can never get over these food courts. They're so friendly and welcoming and they have so much good food at a good price. Got a Jaya grocer over there, an ice cream place here. Yeah. In Typhoon looks great and we're here at just before 11 and we've timed it to beat the lunchtime rush so you can see everything is still uh, empty right now look at this place sushi Jiro. when was the last time well it's not often I ever have sushi it's pretty rare but it's so much fun to watch the uh, plates going around and around like that brings out the little kid in me it's like a train set that is so cool. And purple cane tea cuisine. And this is where we're having breakfast. Village Roast Duck. Let's zoom in on the name right there. And they have um, a set meal, which is why we came here. My friend knows about all this. So it's 20, 26 ringgit, Monday to Friday, 10 to 5. And then all of these are the same price, the set. And it comes with uh, main course, side dish, soup, drinks, and dessert. So it basically looks like that, with the main course being different each time. And I've already placed an order. I'm going, I wanted to get something a bit different, so I went for the roasted duck. But they all look good. Look at that. Spinach tofu with white mushrooms. That sounds good too. And uh, roast pork. Crispy pork. Sweet and sour. Soy sauce chicken. And then some noodles here. Barbecue pork ramen. Roast duck ramen. So anyway, that's where I am. I'll show my meal when it shows up. <laughs> so I've taken a seat in the restaurant. It's called the Roast Duck. Oh, I never even realized it. I ordered roast duck, so I got their signature meal, and it was number one on the meal list as well. So, as I said, I wanted to get something a little bit unusual. I didn't get all the time, and I think the full set has showed up already. They're getting ready for the lunch rush, so I think everything's ready to go. It all arrived very quickly. Roast duck, rice, some side of greens, some veggies. Looks good. Nice and crispy on the outside. I'm talking like I know anything about food, which I don't. And then some soup, a little broth. Looks like a cur I, um, custard, maybe dessert. 
and I don't know what that is off the top of my head. It's chili. Chili? Mm -hmm. That's chili. And I don't know what that is either, just soy sauce? That's the sauce for the rice. Okay. And the duck if you want. Mm -hmm. Right. And it comes with a drink. So let's do a fancy pan up and up and up to show the whole meal. There it is. There's still one more item coming, duck. Oh, is there? Yeah, the dessert. Oh, okay. I thought maybe the custard was the dessert. That's savory. I see. Oh, it's savory. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So we're still expecting a dessert. This one is more savory. So there it is. Looks good. Brunch is over and I'm already back in my neighborhood. After brunch, I did a bit of shopping at Mid Valley. Didn't find what I was looking for. But yeah, the, the brunch was really nice. It was a good meal. The duck was good. I learned that uh, the duck that they serve there is a bit meatier and thicker than duck is usually. I think duck has a reputation, duck meat, as being a little bit thinner, a little bit leaner, say, than chicken. But that particular duck that they serve, it looks a little bit like chicken. That's what I was told anyway, that it's thicker and has more meat. But it was very good and a very nice selection of items. The chili sauce, the soy sauce, the rice, the vegetables, and a kind of tangy uh, custard to have with the meal. And then they served a jelly kind of sweet dessert at the end. Very good service, very fast, very efficient. Hi, how are you? And uh, we went there early with the idea of, of missing the lunchtime rush and that turned out to be a good idea because there really was a lunchtime rush. So that place filled up fast after a while. Yeah, good brunch, enjoyed that quite a bit. And I did mention when I was there at the Abdullah Hukum station that I was going to find out a bit more about the name. And um, yeah, so I was doing a little bit of reading. I've got a sort of a website open right now about the history of the man, Abdullah Hukum himself. And it's quite a story. So there was a man named Abdullah Hukum. That wasn't his original name. He was born in uh, Karinchi district in Sumatra and then he came to uh, Kuala Lumpur area, came to Malaya, Malaya, I believe in 1850 with his father when he was uh, just 15 years old and at some point in his life he completed the Hajj. He went to Mecca and uh, during that trip or after it um, he adopted or was given this new name, Abdullah Hukam. And um, I don't know if there's one single accomplishment that he's known for. I couldn't really come up with one single thing, but he appears to have been a pioneer in the development of Kuala Lumpur as a city and that area around Mid Valley. I guess he owned a lot of land there and he was helping develop it and there was a, a village there, a kampong, named Abdullah Hukam, named after him. He had lots of children, I think like 18 children, has many, many descendants and is just known as one of the original developers of Kuala Lumpur as a city, uh, apparently a good man. And then the village was named after him, but I don't know if the LRT station was named after the village because that's where it's located or whether it was specifically named after the man. I guess it really makes no difference because the village was named after the man. The LRT station has the same name. And apparently in that one mall, the Eco City Mall, his house is preserved. So his Kampung house, his village house, you can go see it. Um, I, I just read that now. If I'd known, I would have gone to take a look at it, but I didn't know at that time. But I guess the house is 100 years old and his descendants kind of made a deal with the local officials when it came to the land that they could develop on the land. But as part of the deal, they wanted their father's or their great great grandfather or their grandfather's memory to be preserved. So that's partially why so many things are named after him. And then um, his house was also preserved in the eco eco city park there and you can go see it so that's the basic idea 
I've probably missed something according to what I read on Wikipedia. He, he dabbled in all kinds of different activities when he was living here. He lived to a very uh, ripe old age, 108 years old when he finally passed away. But he did many, many things throughout his lifetime, all kinds of different businesses, different uh, opportunities like that. But I guess he was a very strong leader in the community. So, yeah, that's all I know about him. I feel like I'm missing something really important about him, but that's what I read so far. And that's where the name of that uh, LRT station comes from. So I'm back at my uh, guest house, my hotel. It's just across the road there, that white building. J Hostels, cozy, comfy, and clean. I can vouch for all of that being true. And I'm just going to pop inside. My morning adventures are over and uh, I'll see you soon. I'll be back. <laughs> see you in a little bit. Later in the day, I decided to have a shawarma for dinner and I put my GoPro around my neck on a Telesan neck mount to record the experience. This is me leaving from my hotel room at the J Hotel Masjid India. And there's a shawarma restaurant just across the road and across the river from my hotel. And I managed to get shawarma from this place one other time. And I've been trying to go back but every time I've gone back, they've been closed. So I haven't been able to figure out exactly when is the best time to go. I'm going there a little bit earlier this time and I uh, have to cross this busy road first and then this bridge takes me across the river. And uh, you often see some people sleeping on this bridge during the day and at night. And as I talk about a little bit later, a couple of families have shown up as well. I don't know their story, of course. I don't know who the families are or the other people, who they are and why they're sleeping on the bridge. It would be interesting to find out. Off to the left here, as I get to the end of the bridge, is the famous mansion tea stall. A lot of YouTubers go there and feature it in their videos. And I've been there with Daryl. Uh, for breakfast as well. So the shawarma place is right up ahead. So one more time, I'm trying to get some shawarma. I've actually uh, lost count of the number of times I've come here <laughs> since the first time. And it's been closed every single time. But it actually looks like it's open today. And hopefully it's not terribly busy because I've heard it's actually quite popular. Hello. Hello, yes. I came back. Hi, yes sir. I remember you. <laughs> Do you have any left for today? You are the last order. Maybe if uh, it is enough, I will make for you. Okay. How many pieces do you want, sir? Well, as many as you can make. I was going to get four, but if you can only make two, that's all right. Okay, sure. Take a yep. seat. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're a popular place. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
banyak orang yang jalan-jalan lah, hanya lah, jalan-jalan lah, lagi baru dari Pamir lah, dia kau. The shawarma adventure continues. This time I made it on time. They weren't closed yet, but it never occurred to me that they would run out. But yeah, they start the day with one big skewer of meat and then they keep cooking it and slicing it and cooking it and slicing it until they run out. And when I showed up just now, they were getting down to the very last little bits. And they had so many orders, people coming to pick them up, that uh, yeah, he said there was a very slim chance that I could get even one. And I wanted to get four. <laughs> but this time, he, he managed to scrape together one for me. So I have one, uh, one shawarma from there. And as he said, yeah, it's better to come back. You gotta time it really properly for this place. Uh, if you come too early, they're going to be so busy, you're waiting a long time. If you come too late, they're, they've run out. So you gotta, you gotta, fi you gotta find this sweet spot. <laughs> That's so funny. But hey, I got one. I got one shawarma. So hey, it's better than nothing. And uh, we'll see, will this one be so delicious that I can't help coming back for more? And if I do, I guess I'll come back at 3 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock. That's starting to feel like a pretty good time. A lot of the local people here, they feed the pigeons, so they get a lot of food here, which is why there's such a big population. Oh, that's kind of cute down there. I don't know if someone put that stick there, like threw it down on purpose for them to perch on. Probably not. I guess uh, the f when the river flooded, it carried that stick down, and now it's a perfect uh, perch for some of the pigeons. Premium, premium perching spot. It's probably more comfortable than being on a flat cement with their feet, right? They probably evolved to wrap around a stick like that, like a branch in a tree. Interesting. Seem to be a couple of uh, families living on the bridge now. Well, this is not going to be a long, involved meal. <laughs> one, one precious, one precious shawarma, my precious. I had to work so hard to get this. Um, I'm not even set up in Planet Doug dining rooms because normally I would be sitting on the floor and I have the plastic chair and I'm using it as a table. But that's if I, that's if I have a bigger meal. Had I had one more shawarma or three or four of them, I might set up my uh, plastic stool as my table. But since I only have one of them and it may not even be that gushy because I, I got the dregs, right? They had to fulfill all the other orders with all the good stuff, but then they kind of scraped, I guess, and they pulled together one more shawarma for me. And this is gonna be my, yeah, there's a, uh, it's what I was talking about, the, the sauce really, really sauces it up. Look at that, it's just like a big mess there. I saw someone online leaving a comment saying you could ask for sauce on the side and then you could sort of take a bite take a spoon of sauce or dip it in the sauce rather than having a big uh, challenging meal like this but ah man the last thing you want is for this to roll off the paper and onto the bed but i am going to try to uh dive into this sitting here <laughs> no, I mean, no, he, like he said, he put one more together, but they didn't skimp. This is a, I don't know, that's a pound and a half sandwich. Look how small it is, but the thing weighs a ton. There's a lot of filling in there. Mm hmm.
Very saucy, very spicy. I like that. A lot of filling. Yeah, I approve of it. The, the ones I had before, I got, I got them one other time successfully, and they were exactly the same as this. Most of the flavor is coming from the sauce. And then a lot of tomatoes, diced tomatoes, <clears throat> diced onions, and then, and then the meat. Maybe the weakest part of the whole thing is the bread, because it, it looks, what I was looking at, it looked like sort of hot dog buns that you would buy by the dozen from a grocery store. You know, very, um, very fluffy white bread. So it's not a gourmet bread here. It's okay though. It's fresh, very doughy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. After many attempts, there you have it. Finally, the uh, kebab jalantar. I think that's the name of the place. The jalan kebab jalantar or jalantar kebab. Whatever it is, I'm enjoying it very much, and I'm glad. I'm glad I finally got one at long last. I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll go back again. I'll, I'll get maybe one, one more time this week, but I'll time it better, maybe get a couple of them. <laughs>